Hello and welcome to the screencast on units of measurement and the units of a derivative. So what is a unit of measurement anyway? Well, a unit of measurement is just a definite way that we measure a quantity, usually with a specific name attached to how we're measuring things. For example, we use meters to measure distance, degrees Celsius for temperature, dollars for money, seconds for time, people for crowd size, and so forth. We can also combine these units to show different things. For example, square feet for area, or miles per hour for speed, dollars per person, people per square mile. All these are very definite ways of measuring certain kinds of things. What we don't want to be is indefinite. We don't ever want to say money, distance, area, time. Those are certain kinds of quantities, but they are not units. They're not specific, definite ways that we measure things. Money, for example, can be measured in a lot of different definite ways. For example, dollars, cents, euros, yen, you name it. Same thing for distance, area, and time. So these are great, but they're not units of measurement. We want to stick to the specifics with names on them. One key concept about units is that they follow the same rules of arithmetic that quantities do. For example, if I'm going to multiply two quantities together and they have units for them, I'm also going to multiply the units together. Example, here's a rectangle, and let's suppose that the side lengths are measured in feet. We don't necessarily care how many feet, just that they are measured in feet. And uh, so the area, as we know, is going to be the length times the height. So to get the units of area, I'm going to take the units of length times the unit of height. That would be feet times feet, and we usually just say square feet in that case. To get back closer to calculus, let's suppose I have a particle that's moving along a straight line like this, and I know its position. It's given by a function s of t, where s is measured in meters, a specific definite unit, and t is measured in seconds, another definite unit. And let's suppose also that I know that right there is s of 2, that's its position at time 2, and right there is s of 5, its position at time 5. So we might ask, what's the average velocity of this particle, or the average rate of change in s? from 2 to 5, and that would be given by this fraction right here. So question, what's the, what are the units of the average velocity? Well, you can tell by looking at the fraction. The top part of the fraction, the numerator, is measured in meters because that's a difference in position values. The bottom part of the fraction is measured in seconds because that's a difference in time values. So I'm, if I'm dividing the distance values by the time values, I have to divide the units of distance by the units of time. And that would just be meters divided by seconds, or more commonly we say meters per second. So whatever the quantities do, the units attached to those quantities must also do. And remember, we want to be specific. We don't want to use something vague like distance and time as units and then get a unit, quote unquote, of measurement of distance per unit time for our rate of change, because that's not specific. There are a lot of ways to measure distance per unit time, or we, do we mean meters per second, miles per hour, feet per year, or what? So we always want to be specific. It's not distance, but something like meters. Not time, but something like seconds. And then we get something nice and definite for our average velocity as well. So what does this have to say about the units of a derivative? Well, let's suppose I start with a function, y equals f of x. Now, what is its derivative? Well, you have a couple of limit-based formulas that define the derivative. This is one of them. f prime of x is the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Now, in terms of the units of the derivative, what is the, unit, what is the derivative measured in? Let's suppose I have units for x, you know, time or people or dollars, and units for y, like degrees Celsius or square miles or whatever. So x and y have units. What are the units on f prime? From the standpoint of finding the units of f prime, the limit here doesn't really matter. The limit is just a process by which we let x get closer and closer to a, and we observe what the values of the fraction do. They do not control or change the units at all. So we can ignore it. And all of a sudden, this looks a lot like the average velocity situation from a minute ago. What are the uh, units of f prime of x? Well, they're the units of whatever this fraction is. And I can tell that by looking at the units of the numerator, which are in whatever units y was measured in, because that's a, that's a difference in y values. And then the denominator, that's a, those are measured in whatever units x was measured in. So the units of the derivative are just the units of y, whatever they are, divided by the units of x, whatever they are or we often say units of y per units of x. And this sets us up to look at a couple of examples of how we might do this specifically, and also how we might use the units of the derivative to help us interpret what it means in a real-world context. 
So let's look at some examples of where we're going to get the units of a derivative just based on the units of the input and output variables of the function we're differentiating. One of the most common functions we see in calculus are equations of motion. Uh, these are equations or functions that tell us the position or location of an object at a certain time. So let's let s uh, equals f of t be one such uh, function here. And so s is a position. Let's measure it in meters. And uh, t is a time value. Let's measure that in seconds. Pretty common units there for distance and time. So what are the units of uh, s prime? What are the units of the derivative? Well, intuitively, we know that s prime, the derivative position, ought to be velocity. But let's just watch the units and see if they play out the way we expect them to. The units of s prime, according to the rubric we just saw, ought to be the units of the uh, dependent variable units of s divided by the units of the independent variable t uh, because the derivative after all is just ds dt it's a rate of change and it's a change in s divided by a change in t so the units get divided too and that would of course be meters look back at the original function specification and just read off meters as the units divided by seconds or meters per second is maybe a better way to say that what about the second derivative? What would be the units of s double prime? Well, s double prime is when you take the derivative of the first derivative. So the units there would be the units of the function whose derivative you just took. That's s prime in this case, divided by the units of t, the uh, independent variable. And so the units of s prime, we just decided were meters per second. And the units of time, of course, are just seconds. So that would be meters per second per second. Sometimes we write that as meters per second squared. If you kind of follow the fraction arithmetic, that works out. And that's acceleration. Now, when your velocity is changing with respect to time, that means you're accelerating. Uh, another simple example here. Let's suppose that c equals f of r is a function that relates the total cost of a car loan as a function of the interest rate that you use to take out the loan. So R is an interest rate. Typically, we measure interest rates in percent. And cost, uh, let's say dollars, is the, are the units of that. So what are the units of C prime? What are the units of the derivative? It may be kind of hard to understand what the derivative is telling us, but the units give us a handhold. What are the units of C prime? Well, we don't have to think too hard. Just the units of C divided by the units of R. And what are the units of C? That will be dollars. The units of R, percentage points. Okay, so the units would be dollars per percent points. So this kind of leads into the next part of the screencast, which is how do you use the units to interpret what it is the number attached to these units uh, actually says. A quick look ahead would say that dollars per percent would mean like if I change my percentage by a certain amount, how much would the dollar amount change by? Let's get into that in a little bit more detail now. So the key to understanding how to use units to help you understand the meaning of a derivative is to just think of derivative as a slope of a tangent line, which is what it is. Let's suppose you had a function and you knew that f prime of a equals b. That means that right at the point when x equals a, the slope of that function is b. The rise over run of that function is b. So if right at the point when x equals a, if I change x by one unit, I can expect a change in the output, a rise or maybe a drop, by b units. Let's take a look at a couple of examples where this makes this very precise. So in this first example, let's suppose I have a function s of t, and again, it's giving me position as a function of time. Let's suppose time is in seconds and the output position is in feet. Let's suppose also that I knew that s prime of 2 was equal to 30. Well, from what we already discussed, the units of this derivative are the uh, units of the output, which are in feet, divided by the units of the input, which is in seconds. Now, inter to interpret that, that means that right at the point when time equals 2, one more second of travel will result in an increase of 30 feet of position. Again, it's just a rise over run. If I increase the seconds by 1, I'm going up 30 feet. And this one down here is a little bit less standard. I suppose I have C of R, and this gives the cost of a car loan as a function of the interest rate. The total cost depends on the interest rate. So the input's measured in percentages, uh, percentage points, and the output's measured in dollars. So if C prime of 5 is 2,200, that's measured in dollars per percent, the units of the output divided by units of the input. And what that would mean is for every one, at this point, right when the interest rate is 5%, a uh, 1% increase in the interest rate would result in a $2,200 increase in the total cost. So we interpret these derivatives using the units as rise over run, and if I bump this up by one, 
this goes up by this much. 